And many people seem happy to surrender liberty as long as it's incremental and at least initially painless. A, a, joke, a joke is the smallest indicator and most reliable indicator of liberty. Uh, so laugh it up while you can, because there will be no jokes in the future, none. It will be a wasteland of plonking earnestness. Uh, during the final stages of Nelson Mandela's slowly deteriorating health, Neil Phillips, who runs the Crumbs Sandwich Shop in the English town of Rugeley, went online and tweeted, my PC takes so long to shut down I've decided to call it Nelson Mandela. <laughs> the, the, the Staffordshire Constabulary arrested him, seized his computers, and in the course of an eight-hour detention, fingerprinted and DNA swabbed him. Eight hours in a jail cell for a joke. Not in communist Czechoslovakia, but in England. You know, before one speaks to a, a, an audience such as yourselves, a prudent man uh, goes to the library and uh, looks up uh, 10 can't miss tips for public speakers. And right up at the front, they advise you to open up with a light hearted observation so people know it's uh, not going to be a lot of heavy stuff. And uh, that's what Professor Sir Tim Hunt. Uh, fellow of the Royal Society did last year. He's, he's a Nobel laureate. He's a, a genuine one, not a pretend one, like uh, the guy who's suing me, uh, the, uh, the, hockey, the hockey stick inventor who's, uh, whose name escapes me. Because uh, frankly, with my legal bills, I have a right to forget his name, I think. And uh, last year, Sir Tim was in Seoul, South Korea, for some science conference. And he was required to make a few remarks. So he began with an ill-advised attempt at warming up the room. Uh, quote, let me tell you about my trouble with girls. Three things happen when they are in the lab. You fall in love with them, they fall in love with you, and when you criticize them, they cry. <laughs> not the funniest joke in the world. <laughs> That's why you should hire a professional and not try it yourself. Uh, but the, uh, the genius of a scientist is often inversely proportional to his social ease. Uh, so, Sir Tim did not anticipate that a throwaway line about how girls are so emotional about these things uh, would result in the girls getting so emotional about these things. <laughs> While he was on the flight back to London, his life was destroyed. Over. He lost everything. His professorship, his Royal Society committee ships, all of it gone because of 12 seconds in a glorious half century of scientific brilliance. There's a, there's a section in one of my books called Last Laughs in which I write about a novel called The Joke, Milan Kundera's a great tale of the pitfalls of ideologically unsound gags in communist Eastern Europe, in which a man makes a very mild throwaway joke and his entire life is ruined. And that's how we in the free world used to think about the communist world. They were the guys who policed jokes. Uh, at the time of Stalin's death in 1953, there were over 200,000 prisoners in Soviet labor camps who'd been convicted of telling jokes of which the regime did not approve. And we laugh because we're free and they're not. But in fact, the world of Milan Kundera, in which a guy's life is destroyed for the wrong joke, is alive and well in the supposed free West. We don't send you to labor camp for the joke, not yet, but we are willing to destroy your life completely for a non-ideologically compliant gag. Freedom requires eternal vigilance and is always there to be fought for. And I, I, I learned a big lesson from my fight against Section 13, uh, that, that if you push back as hard as the left pushes for its causes, 
Your cause can be won. You can reframe the debate on your terms, and you can put them on the defensive. And they are the ones who are saying, no, you can't say that. They're the ones saying, no, that's not funny. They're the ones saying, you have to be banned, you have to be silenced. They're not yet, not yet, going into the offices, as they did with Charlie Hebdo, and gunning down everybody. But they're on the same continuum of the people who are always arguing for why you have less freedom, why you have to shut up, why you have to be quiet, and why you have to crawl into silence while they get to uh, impose their world on you. And it doesn't have to be like that, but it starts at your level, and it starts with your friends and neighbors, and it starts at the municipal level, and it starts at the primary school level, and, and only Ultimately, does it percolate up to the national and international level? So if all of you vow not to surrender the habits of liberty, to speak freely, to act freely, to live freely, they cannot prosecute us all, uh, and if they decide to go full Charlie Hebdo, they cannot kill us all. Every one of us, every one of us is isolated until he, fr until he finds that the neighbor across the street agrees with him, or the, the lady at the parent-teacher conference agrees with them. And we won't know, as long as they're just trying to make us all fall silent and not talk about it. When you can speak up, when you can speak freely, you are free to persuade, you are free to find allies.